people from uh, Mark Hinton, Steve Waters, and also we have uh, over there James Lodge, who are going to be talking to you about using partnerships to deliver effective enterprise education, and I'm going to provide a, a case study for us. So, without okay. any further ado. Okay, uh, well, thank you for coming to our session. Um, Steve and I work in the career service at the university, um, and we work with James, who is a uh, an entrepreneur, social entrepreneur, um, has developed um, a training tool um, called Zing and, and an enterprise challenge related to that called Flux. Um, and, and really the partnership that we wanted to talk about today is really working with, with James and, and how we've used Flux to really engage um, students, staff and businesses in enterprise and entrepreneurship. Before I go any further, um, do any of you use Flux already? Okay, that's good. Well, what we wanted to do is just start with um, just start with a quick video that we used at our national uh, our final of Flux this year. Actually, I should have introduced James as well, who's one of our students, one of our graduates now, who took part in Flux this year, and um, who's also going to contribute. We'll start with a quick video we put together for our university heat of Flux 2012. Uh, 
um, I'll talk a bit about where Flux fits into our overall strategy for uh, engaging students and increasing business startups, and, um, and how we're planning to further develop uh, Flux here. Um, we'll also talk a bit about different partners that we've engaged through, specifically through through Zing and Flux. So I hope that's kind of what you're expecting. Um, hopefully. So, and at that point, I'll pass over to James. Great. Thank you very much, Mark. I love that photo there of the of the desk strewn with bottles and rubbish and sweet wrappers and all that kind of stuff because it's so often my, my office looks like that. Um, uh, please pick up the cards in front of you, the, um, these ones here, this, these hexagonal cards, and have a look at them. These are the Zinc cards and all I'm going to do is take a little bit of time and explain very, very briefly what Zinc is um, and how it can be used. So you have a board on your table, and in the bottom left-hand corner there is a box called idea, and literally that is where somebody would write in an idea for a business. It could be in a university setting you are giving them a scenario. So they've got a case study, and they're given some information beforehand, or it could be their very own business idea which they wish to start or have started. And they write that down in the bottom left-hand corner. In the top right hand corner is the goal. Very simple. And in terms of Zing, we only ask for two things. We ask for A, that the goal is quantifiable. It has some numbers related to it, and so you know when you've reached it. And secondly, that it has a time frame. And so what you then have up between idea and goal, a diagonal line, if you can imagine, which is a timeline, running from where you are now, having created your idea, to where you want to get to. Your goal, as simple as that. Then, if you have a look at those cards, there are a series of cards. We have five different categories. Leave the reds to one side for the moment. In green, we have finance. Blue, we have people. In yellow, we have actions, which is basically operations. Um, orange, marketing. Um, the purpley brown colour is strategy. And the red ones are about risk. And leave those to one side. Now, when you're working with students, and using Zing, the student does the work, and the tool provides the content, actually, provides the directions they go through it. And so simply what students would do, they've got their idea, and they've got their goal, and first of all, they would just pick out a card at random. And I've, got, I've picked out a card that simply says, develop website. They have a glossary of terms, and they would turn to the glossary of terms then, and read, the process of designing and implementing the structure and content of your website to maximise awareness and fulfil information needs. Very simple, but they have to read from the glossary the definition for each of the cards as they come up to it. Because what we want them to do, I'm not precious about our definitions, but I want them to agree a definition so they're all on the same page before they make a decision of whether this, developing a website, is important to them or not. The next thing they need to do is, right, we know we need to develop a website. So do we need to, de when do we need to develop it? And the board, if you can see on the board in front of you, is divided into three different coloured areas. Slightly different shading. Stuff you're going to do now, stuff you're going to do soon, and stuff you're going to do later. Just simply as that. And so they have to decide, first of all, developing a website, when do we need to do that? Let's say we need to do that really early on and they place it there. It's their first step on building their strategy. They then draw out another card. I've brought, brought out a, uh, this is an actions card, so basically operations, but it says develop a full business plan. Okay, that's something that we need to do. They would read from the glossary, yeah, we agree a definition of what that means for us, and then they decide whether they need to actually do this, and what, sorry, when they need to do it, now, soon, or later. And they're going to say, oh, right, well, actually, we need to do this really early on. In fact, that's probably the first thing we need to do. They then go on and draw another card. And this card says, conduct secondary research. Ah, do we need to go and talk to whom our potential customers are? Yeah, I think we probably do need to do that. And actually, do we need to do that before we can possibly write a business plan, and actually, probably, before we could possibly even think about developing a new website. So actually, these, these things need to move out a bit more now, and, and that's something we need to go and talk to our customers really early on. 
So in a group discussion, they begin to build up a strategy whereby each of these stepping stones takes them on a journey all the way up to their goal. As simple as that. Now some of the cards, they'll be closely related. So conducting secondary research and developing a full business plan are very closely related. And in which case they would touch and you're shown that there is an association. You have to do this, conduct the research, before, directly before you can write your business plan. So it starts creating these associations in their mind. So very, very quickly they're developing a sophisticated business plan, a strategy, as they go through, but not sitting down in front of the computer, not doing it focused, but actually working together as a team. What are they doing when they're going through that process? They're learning loads and loads of business terms, even if the business that they're working on, the idea they're working on is a scenario and it's not theirs, they're learning lots about business terms. But they're also learning about different ways to build strategy and how things work together. And certain things have to be done in certain ways. I want to just show you a little video to start with. Now to start the zinging, uh, which uh, hopefully will kind of, um, you know, uncover some of the details that we don't. Obviously, not a lot of us are kind of business thinkers. But mind you, wouldn't ordinarily, or I wouldn't ordinarily think of going. Oh, should we talk about a secondary stock market listening? It's a good thought. I think it really does highlight areas that you actually want to share. It breaks things down into more like manage manageable kind of concepts on a business idea. It gets you thinking about different areas that you wouldn't normally think about. Okay, I'm just going to pause there. So, so it helps the students to work out how to build a business strategy and helps them working as a team to make sure they're all on the same page. Read any of the business literature, businesses that succeed all know where they're going, every single member. So this enables that to happen. But the other thing about it is that what you're creating is a visual business plan, very, very rapidly, very quickly. And that then enables you to go get advice or even investment very quickly because you can communicate your strategy very quickly. So the second bit is how it can be communicated to business advisors. We are Charles Final. Um, we're a company based around products and services for our end final care children and long-term business. In the first area, what we'll be doing is talking with parents and schools to see how we can get the sort of spam product out quickly, effectively and cheaply and also what sort of uh, second generation products would interest the market. Um, we're going to have taken some designs and marketing staff to look at the initial prototype of the spam product and the two-way communication and location devices which we intend to then protect but a final idea from being something really quite enormous to a quite structured proposal now with to go back on our initial ideas. In these meetings, the participants use the visual nature of Zing to easily and effectively communicate their strategy to these experts who give them advice to improve it. Uh, given that we've actually learned from that, we're now implementing this advice into our current strategy. I think we can, we can definitely do better. Having completed the meetings, the participants then use the advice that they have collected to revise their strategies and prepare a pitch which they deliver back to the experts in a panel, back in the STEM style. So two things, one is on enabling them to build really quite complicated strategies quite quickly, and the second being able to communicate them within hours to business advisors in a professional setting. That's it. That's two. Okay, do you want me to drive? <laughs> you can drive if you like. You'll probably do a better job than I did. Um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about how we have used Zing and how we've developed Flux um, at Plymouth. And this diagram here um, just has a number of images really, which shows the process that was shown through the video that James um, uh, showed you just a second ago. We actually have uh, a large scale Flux event which takes place in our autumn term. Um, we have about 60, 70 students take part in teams of six. And they actually compete, as James said at the start, we give them a business scenario. So they're not thinking about their own business idea at this time, they're thinking about a, an imaginary scenario. They go through the process. Um, we do that on campus, uh, or we have done on campus for the last four or five years. Um, uh, this year we actually um, moved the location for our event to a local business. Um, let's go to the, the next one. 
One of the, uh, our local law firms, Scott Anthony Solicitors, actually freed up their whole client floor, uh, which included all of their meeting spaces and office space for a whole day, uh, cancelled every meeting they had, which is very kind of them. Um, and we actually ran our event there, which is great for the students because it put them in an environment which they weren't used to, very corporate, um, and they were able to use that tool and be able to work through those, those ideas um, uh, through the course of the day. It's quite fast paced, it's quite uh, intensive, the actual process. We usually start the day about half eight, nine o'clock in the morning, um, and then run through till, this year we ran through till about seven o'clock. Last year's event was obviously a great event for us off campus, and we had some really good uh, feedback from employers and from, expert, uh, from, from students as well. But we couldn't really have done any of that. We couldn't have evolved our Flux uh, competition to the level that we have this year without the support from James. James actually came and ran, and his team came and ran our very, very first Flux event here at Plymouth, probably six, seven years ago. Yeah, well before my time. Um, and the Working Knowledge Group actually provided all of the initial training for our staff. So now we have colleagues in the service, Mark, myself, and a couple of others, who are actually trained in Zing. We know how the system works. We're able to develop that and run it out over courses, which Mark will go through uh, in a little bit. Yeah, this is working, that is. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah, super. For us, it's a really good opportunity to get employers involved with the event. Um, the actual structure of the event involves students actually having to have business meetings with experts from different sectors. So there are four main sectors, as James was going through earlier on. Um, we have experts coming in representing those different um, areas of business. This is a quote from Rachel Rotherham, uh, who recently has actually moved into an HR business partners role at Cooperative Group, but was um, running their whole graduate recruitment program from Manchester. Cooperative Group were, a universe, uh, were an organisation that hadn't previously engaged with us as a, a university. Um, and through contacts we had through AGR, we managed to convince Rachel that it would actually be quite good to come down and get involved. And this is the quote that she actually gave, so I won't read it out word for word, but I'm sure you can read that. Um, so the feedback from our employer experts was excellent. Um, a lot of them saw it as a great opportunity to spot talent. And this year with our Flux event, uh, being held for Anstey, we actually incorporated a networking element. So the experts were able to take time to spend with students, and James is um, going to very kindly talk about his experience in a second. Um, so we used that as a networking and recruitment event for, for those students, and James will give you a little bit more information on how that worked. Katrina um, is a geography student, um, the team who won it in 2009, I think it was, um, were all geography students. Um, and this is a quote from, uh, from Kat, who actually worked with us last year. Um, I think the important thing is to notice there, it's great fun. It's hard, it's fast paced, you're, re you're really going for it the whole day. You provide them with a lunch and you think they're just going to sit down and literally the lunch is just strewn everywhere. It's just absolutely um, chaotic at times. But it is great fun. Um, they can practice problem solving and team working skills. It gives them confidence to be able to take back into their course and into uh, future careers. And as Kat said, I can't wait for your next event. And that is generally, you know, genuinely a, a response that we get from a lot of our students who get involved with these events. The element that we really try to in, uh, encourage with our Flux event, uh, using the Zoom tool, is it's competition. Uh, this is probably the cheesiest photo we could find of students. Uh, James hates it. Um, Kaylee, who's uh, sitting at the front there, um, absolutely hates the photo because she looks tiny. Um, but this is our winning team from our uh, Plymouth University heat this year at uh, Fort Anstey. And uh, they did incredibly well. They beat off some really stiff competitions with our, uh, our heat this year. And went on to represent us at the national finals at Ravensbourne this year, which uh, James facilitated the whole uh, of that uh, two-day event. Uh, so it's a, a longer event than in our university one. And James was a member of the team that actually won it on a national uh, level, which is great for us. Third time we've won it nationally, so um, we get a bit of a reputation for, for winning Flux. But what I'd like to do is really, I mean, I can talk to you all day about Flux, and you know, <laughs> Mark will probably tell you, he's always told me I've got no time. So, um, James is just going to stand up and say a few words really about what he got out of it as a student, um, and also about the networking element with recruiters, so. Good morning, still, Jess. Um, as you tell, James, I won the national competition in London after winning the um, total heat down here. Uh, the benefits I definitely got from Flux are being able to develop a CV, 
no end. Um, for example, employers are always looking for commercial awareness, um, which is really difficult for a student to show. However, these kind of competitions, which very few options like this, um, really help us show that you know we do have this knowledge, we can do it. You know, here it is. It, we can put it on our CV, we can mention it in interviews. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. Um yeah, so it's great for our CV. The networking element is also incredible. Um, out of the six of us there, um, three of us are already, no, four of us are already in work with employers who are involved in Flux. I'm involved with Faith, and I'm meant to be hearing about that very soon, but you know. Um, so that element of being able to meet the employers, networking with them, like Steve said, the talent spotting is just incredible. Uh, we also, when we went to London, got to meet a lot of other national businesses um, and lots of great employers, such as. So, oh, I'm kind of a <laughs> But we got to meet people from like Co op, KPMG, PwC, fantastic. And we got to meet a lot of other people from different universities. And we actually came in contact with a fair few of them, for example, um, Manchester Mets, Aberystwyth, City ish. Um, it's, although there is a lot of competition, we're all very like-minded people, so in the evening events we just got sat down, talked to each other, asked how we were, how, how each other were, how our ideas developed, etc, etc, and we developed like very close bonds through it, and we think that although there is networking with employers that way, it's also networking with our peer group who share the same kind of interests, and who are going to be in you know, our competition in the future, so it's great in that respect. Um, what I'm going to do now is just talk about where this fits in our university strategy for enterprise and just give you some other examples of how we use Flux and then really open up for questions and discussion. Um, so I'll just take a, take a few minutes. Um, at the university, we're not, in the career service, we're not experts in how to spin out businesses. And for students who want to spin out businesses, pre-incubation, all that kind of thing, we haven't got that expertise. And um, I don't feel we need to. We have a research and innovation department who have that expertise. And so our goal really is to work at this end with the masses. The, one, the thing that we want to do is to engage students in the idea that they can set up a business. We want to give them the confidence or the contacts or um, some basic information and advice that will basically get our students entering into our business startup competitions and, and going into the formation zone or working with uh, research innovation to spin out basically their, their companies. Um, so Flux I see right, not, this isn't where I see in my mind obviously James, it's not at the bottom, <laughs> but, uh, but it is kind of a way that we engage the students. And most of the students who engage with this enter it, enter the competition because it's going to be fun, it's going to develop their employability skills, they're going to meet employers. Every time we run a Flux event though, there will be some students who come up and say, actually, I have got a bit of a business idea, but I, I didn't know what to do with it. And, and those are the kind of people that we will then, we will then push into talking to, or suggest they talk to some of our colleagues to just kind of work through that idea. So, um, so our main objective of using enterprise education is actually around more general mobility systems and also our profile. Um, as well as our university event, we do lots of departmental flux events. This is um, our chemistry students um, who we run an event for every year, exactly the same as our university heat. They get prize money, they get a trophy, they come in suits, they meet business advisors. The only difference is that is part of their course. And what they will say to us at the start of our flux events is this, what's chemistry got to do with business, and by the end of the event, most of them can see the link, particularly when we bring back some of our alumni and they realise that actually chemists and business do mix. So, uh, and the other thing, this is, this is a team of chemists who then entered our university heat of flux this year. There is no way we would have got a team of chemists to enter University of Flux. So we work with lots of different programmes. Um, actually, that, I'll just go to this one. This is our vet who um, we work with 3D design. Now, I would all 3D designers, I think, would be thinking about their own business. I talked to Yvette uh, pre-flux, and um, 
she said to me, well, I would have a business, I would run a business, but I haven't got a business idea. Now, I was talking to her there at her design show for the 3D. This is her work. She was asked to exhibit in Canada, New York, and London. She won a Kevin McLeod Green Award for her Florence table, and she said to me, I haven't got a business idea. So, I want to engage people like that. If you have got a business idea, you just need the confidence and the context. Um, this was one of my toughest ever gigs. <laughs> um, I asked to go and deliver flux in Sri Lanka as part of entrepreneurship. <laughs> um, um, that was the winning team from, from that. Quite an insight. So I've not worked with Sri Lankan students before. Um, very gentle. Um, used to learning in a much more uh, listening and writing kind of way, listening to experts. Um, but they really enjoyed the participative nature of Flux. They said it was a, a type of learning they hadn't done before. And what really came across was lots of students who said, I didn't have the potential within me. You've, you've kind of given me that. Now, again, if you said to these students, come along for this sign up event, they wouldn't have come. It was part of the entrepreneurship module. And um, so it was uh, part of the so when we develop our University Flux event, what we're really trying to do is get academics along to say to them, why don't you do a Flux event for your students? Because they won't come to our sign-up event, and then why don't you get your winning team to come and enter our University Flux competition? And slowly but surely, that's what we're achieving. And our goal looking forward is to have uh, you know, 12, 14, 15 departments running their own Flux events, coming to our University final, the best of the best, then going to represent us the national and of course come back with the national program year on year. Um, the other thing we've done with Flux is we've trained some of our students to facilitate Flux, to see it the other side. For our students, instead of getting experts from outside of the university, our students who are like marketing students or HR students, asking them to be the experts and then delivering Flux with school groups. And we've done that for the last couple of years very successfully. And we've paired up with our SIFE team um, because um, our SIFE team were looking for activities that they could do and inspiring young people to be entrepreneurs was something that they felt that they could engage with. And um, I think this is helping them to get a different insight to business and confidence to, to run their projects but also develop their individuals. The other thing about Flux, and this is really the thing that's been the biggest benefit for us, as a career service, and I'll say, um, won't be the last time I said this today. Some people think career services are a bit dull and um, they don't want to come and meet with us. So we've used Flux to really say to students, actually, you know, you can be fun <laughs> um, and we can do enjoyable things. And as you saw from the quote from, 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 from the cat earlier on, you know, when's your next event? We use Flux to build our reputation, our profile. This is our vice chancellor who will be speaking later. Obviously, that's Kevin McLeod. Um, our vice chancellor, this has raised our profile with Wendy hugely more than anything else we've done. Um, we, it's engaged us with board of governors, it's got us new employers that we haven't worked with before, it's got us to work with different students that we haven't worked with before. And that's really why, why I got involved. Um, the first time I met James, I went to a session. If I'm completely honest, I came to a session, I didn't really understand how Flux worked, it was all worked. But I, I knew enough to get James to come down and deliver an event for us and train us to deliver it after I've seen the work with our students, and that's how I got started. So if you're a bit confused by this thing, and it didn't really work, I'd say give it a go, and um, then get the students to do because that's how we started, and um, it's been very, very good for us. And that's really all we wanted to say, not all we wanted to say is quite a long time, but we've now got time for questions, discussion, anything you want to ask, probably got about 10, 15 minutes, so throw it over to, any, to anyone. Quick question. Please sign my Really, the question was: I'm involved in enterprise rather than employability. You can argue about whether it's six months ago. Um, I mean, it looks like a great tool from an from an employability and a kind of point of view. Um, but where do your most enterprising students hit that so that pyramid? Do they start with? Looks or do they tend to come in at a level? They come in at different, different points. Some come, I mean, lots of our students already run businesses. And um, so it's different, different points. That's where we, we work at the bottom of the pyramid because
because that's where we can, you know, to try and engage people. Really? Yeah, there's obviously a team element. Yeah. Often there's tend to be loaders of the mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Yeah, no, I think you're right. The good thing from when we did the chemistry flux last year in the course was we had experts, alumni from in here who were chemists, who got into work in other organisations and were quite senior in their organisations. Some of the students who went because it was part of their course were actually developing an idea and they came up with one idea and the expert was like, actually, you could actually do that. You could actually make some money out of that business. And they've been in contact with them since then to discuss how that might work. So I think Mark's right, they do, the students do come in, you get the really engaged students who just come in anyway and they know what they're doing and they do it. But we do try and use flux and zing as a chemist is a good example of I'm certain sort of like it. They were expensive to try and not many of us can afford to think that. Um, but we also scientists tend to be in the box and not look out. Well we've got a pre-incubation space for STEM graduates and um, certainly we want to encourage. And, and a lot of our students won't know that. So as part of these events, we make people aware that we've got those facilities and that kind of support. Thank you. Uh, just to pick up on a comment, you have been fortunate enough to be a national judge at SIFE. I just know how transformational these things can be. Um, yesterday, there were two sessions that focused very much on how to evaluate from a university perspective. So my question is, you said that it's actually embedded in a board summit. Um, how does that work in terms of the university type assessment? You're looking to students' qualifications and things. Yeah. Is there some metric that you use to match up what you're doing here with the assessment in the taught program? Um, it varies. In some programs, um, they don't. They um, the students are obviously assessed on the day and you know, the kind of things they do, but it doesn't go any further than that. They. But in other programs, uh, like the entrepreneurship module in Sri Lanka. The students had to had to write up their business plan, and, and that was um, that was assessed. They, the students there were postgraduate either postgraduate students who were doing an entrepreneurship model, so they had some stuff before we did flux on um, learning in a more interactive style, and idea generation. But they had to write their business plan, and that was assessed. They had to reflect on their, the part they played in the flux team, so to reflect on their personal and interpersonal skills. And they were, their presentations were assessed in a more academic way than we were doing here. They, we had um, the tutors from the module, as well as the experts giving their feedback, they assessed them on their criteria. So that was, um, but it, it's very flexible. Yeah, I'm sort of thinking of the extra curriculum versus how valuable this is. How are you getting more embedded in the curriculum? James one will say a bit more, but like in our computing degree, they don't do it as a one-day event, they do it as over four weeks. And um, that was very much assessed in the part of their curriculum, but they had to do a lot more um, reflective, or reflective uh, writing between each stage. So they do like the thing, the, the, the experts came in to work with them on their ideas, I mean, they uh, sort of adapted it. And then they, and then they went, and they had another session where they were developing an idea, and then they merged and got feedback. So it's different, used in different ways, and it changed from it. Yeah, there's examples of other universities around the country using it in different ways. So um, people setting assignments using it. So we've got this problem, you need to get to this point. How are you going to form? I need a picture of, of the strategy you formed together, and then marking those strategies, which are then annotated. Um, uh, other courses using it, so uh, bringing in a small business, bringing in an existing entrepreneur, getting a group of students to work on at the beginning, then using it as effectively the framework. So you do a week of lectures of learning, you go back and re-change your strategy, and then, then do another week of learning and then re-stress it, and constantly you're working on that entrepreneur's business. Three months later, you then present back your strategy, having had all that learning in the time. So use as a framework in that way. But, Lots, lots and lots of examples of how, it's used, how it is used that I'm very happy to share with you and introduce you to people. Yeah, I guess it's because yesterday two units were asking about the toughness, the reflection, for example, how do you assess reflection validly, appropriately, and the you know, all the rest of it. So it's the assessment in particular, yeah. that I guess, that I'm thinking about. Okay. Um, two, um, two questions. One is, 
two questions. One focus on uh, what prizes do students get? Uh, it varies. We're um, I mean, we're at Santander University at the moment, which is very good. So we allocate some of that. So uh, ranges from about 180 pound to 300 pound. Well, I did um, I did one which was with events management students, and it was part of their first year. Go back to assessment that was they did it as part of the skills module. So um, so they got them to do presentations very early on. They got a few pounds and all that. So I said, oh, look, there's prize money, 180 pounds. And a hand went up and said, is that 180 pounds each? Yeah. <laughs> well, no. So it's more, I, I don't know how much difference the money makes, James. I personally did it, uh, so I managed to see the prize money just an added bonus. Because I'm trying to get into law, and it's very, very competitive. You need to show these kind of skills. So you know, if you don't do these kind of competitions, then you're going to get at a disadvantage. So that's the main reason why I did this competition. The prize money was an added bonus to it. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's interesting in the national competition as well, so you know, there's big cash prizes and stuff. But the number of times we have to remind the winners to want the money, you know, by the time they reach the end of the process, they completely forgot about the money. It, it genuinely is the experience that they're going through. It works to get them involved in the first place. Oh, come on, you can win some cash. Um, but actually, very quickly, it becomes irrelevant. That sounds a bit contrived, but it genuinely does. Because it is such a fast paced day, you just don't have time to think about anything else. You have to think about what, what's coming next, what do I have to do? You need to be a session with food everywhere. I mean, when we did the interns, um, it was literally like that. It was food everywhere. We just didn't stop and we didn't really have time to think about the money. And it was just, oh, oh yeah, at the end of the day, we just remembered that we had this you know, free meal down the road. It's salary, it's lovely. What we do is we do feed the students from the moment they get there until they go. So there is a cost. <laughs> but I think that makes the day a bit special. And um, like having having breakfast over in front of the in the harbour and then having your lunch arrive and snacks and stuff like that. There is that there is that cost. One of the um, one of the things I wanted to bring up really briefly is um, I'm working with you know, we've mentioned about working with academics and the community courses. We, um, we have a tourist and hospitality course here based over on business school and their um, head of school has asked to use um, the Zim tool as an induction pressure for their students. Your students arrive, you arrive at the university, you don't know anybody and you want the students to mesh, you want them to network, you want them to make new friends, you want to do it quick. This does it. You, you can't get away from it, you have to start talking to so on Monday, actually, I'm actually running a cut-down version of Zing for their hospitality and tourism students. And it's going to be about 80 in that. So it's actually larger than the main, our main university front competition. But they solve it. They're not concentrating so much on the business and entrepreneurship element and the enterprise. It's more on using it as a development tool and getting the students to actually integrate with each other. And that, and then they are going to run another one. They've actually secured space at Jury's in. And then that whole client suite or their, their, their meeting suite for the whole day to run an equally large event for just their students. So they're obviously walking into that as well, but they can see the benefit of using this tool to create that bond and that communication element. You have students who are really, really engaged and very outgoing, and then you have students who are quite quiet. But because that part of the element of the competition or the event is the pitch, then effectively that almost forces the students into having to actually stand up and actually present to a group. And for some that's quite unnerving, but as an event on their first day, you know, initially it's their first day of uni, that's, I think it's a great opportunity for students to actually engage with each other. So. We'll call you if those students drop out, James. Yeah, I'm yeah. the course. What do you have? Michael, question. You mentioned the departmental competitions. It's more of an operational question. How do you manage that? Who actually is in charge of organising the events? Um, it varies. It's varied year on year. I mean, um, uh, Steve and I are very involved, but we've got um, we've got events management students on placement with us, so they they do a lot of it. Um, one of the things uh, we've actually got uh, uh, the people organising this conference are actually going to be organising our next university flux with logistics because we've it's that it's become that kind of big in the union. So, um, 
when they're, but when they're it's on course, it's, it's, I mean, Mark and I do know the system very, very well, so we're almost like consultants. So they'll email us and say, we're thinking of doing one in computing. I've got one at the moment in computing. I've got an organization who have got an actual business problem that they want to solve. So they provide that scenario to the computing students. are like, that's brilliant. And they're bringing experts in from their organization to effectively get a whole day's worth of um, free consultation from you know, people that aren't in the business. So we end, we end up coming in and helping sort of facilitate that. Um, as well as the events management students are great for actual the logistics on the day and how an event runs and making sure it's smooth, time as well, you know, well organised through the day. So I think I, I think like all events, when we first did it, it took us hours and hours and hours. Because we'd be thinking about everything and now we've got a checklist and it's, it doesn't take too Are they paid events managers students? Mm -hmm. Are the students paid or do they do it voluntarily? Mm -hmm. Oh no, they're, well, they're part of us. They're part of our team, so they've got their, okay. their own placement. Oh, I see. So yeah. we have, we've got two placement students this year for events management. Who are we sadly paid, um, but we also work with the events management course to get students in as part of their primary year practical. So they will actually come in and help deliver that. And that will basically be able to talk about embedding it in the curriculum. It actually forms part of their primary year project, mm -hmm. so they can work on that as their primary year project for, for their course. So. That's brilliant. I don't know if we have a fourth, but I'll have a look at the back. Just a quick question. An ex chemist as well. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, do you do any sort of formal measurement within the grizzle of the impact of something like this on you and your delivery of, of your services? Or is it something that's done on a more ad hoc? Um, we don't, I mean, we obviously evaluate the events. Mm -hmm. um, when we first ran it, we did quite in-depth evaluations to find out how we could do them better and what the students thought of it. Um, to be, we've stopped doing that now because basically, um, you know, when we run events, most of the students come out for a drink afterwards and they're networking and they stay very late and you can tell how much they've got out of it. I just wondering for, for you personally, the service itself, because you must have a consequence must be quite significant impacts on new partnerships yeah. potentially with other companies yeah. and also on seeing an increase in students coming through for other services as a yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Yeah. Also, yeah. students will engage with with, Zen, with our flux competition yeah. because it's a bit of like a competition element. But then you'll suddenly find them looking at a careers appointment and then you might find them looking at a mock interview and then they're entering another competition you run and they, their engagement from that side because as Mark said earlier, careers isn't seen as fun. Careers is or in a week before you graduate and suddenly you panic and you show what you're going to do. But this, because we engage so early in the courses first year, we're able to, we're able to embed that so that that thought process of students hits them earlier. Because everyone says that they should have done their career in the first year, so it's absolutely given. But that actual that flux element actually allows students to gain access to the other stuff that we do. And as Mark said earlier on, as an institutional, um, benchmark, I guess, mm -hmm. that's enabled us to be seen it's you know, profile in, in a really, really positive line. I think it helps when you enter national competitions with women and things like that, and vice chancellors, they were texting you to say, well done, which is great, but it does raise the profile of your service, so all the other things that you end up doing as a university or an institution then suddenly become on the radar because of that element, so yeah, it has worked. Fantastic work I think it would be interesting to look at how those who come on a departmental event, how much impact it has on them. Yeah. Um, again, you get the informal feedback about from, but how much does that help them further down? Mm -hmm. Do you do any follow up on the students just out of entry level on the tube and follow up to see if they have absolute problems and stuff? I know we know of individual students who have gone on and um, have either set up a business or gone down the road towards setting up a business and um, you know I know of a couple who, who did the early flux events who went down that road and they didn't haven't ended up setting up a business but they certainly worked with R and I quite a bit and investigated it. And I, again I it would be would be interested to look through because we've got a lot of the names to see how many of them I do know, I mean, maybe the nature of some of the students who do the sign up events, I know a lot of them are in graduate level jobs. Um, and in grad, 
had some quite unusual ones from degrees where you wouldn't necessarily think they'd go into that job, but it's, it's because they're signing up for this kind of thing, it's the nature of their students. So what I would hope is that we would have enticed some to think about their future career maybe a bit earlier and might have to engage with some of the other ways of being supported. I've certainly seen some <coughs> students really grow from doing flux in maybe their second year to then engage with stuff like SIFE and then really get some fantastic jobs as a result. Not all down to us. <laughs> Any other last no, time for one more question or lunch? Oh, one more question. One more question for Jane, um, What was the idea that you won last week? Um, the internal and national. Or both, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there are two different cases. The internal one was um, trying to find something which is going to be recession proof and help employability in South West. Help them recover. Well, help them recover from the recession. Yeah. And our idea was basically um, model on the gateway itself and the employability service, but rather than just be for students, be for everyone in Plymouth. Mm -hmm. And it would be a social enterprise which you get from lots of grants, and it could just be a career service but for everyone. Right. And then the national um, idea was out because of how the Ravens won college, which is just by the other two. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of derry, derry times just by it. And, uh, we were told that we have a one year lease in the land and you have to do something in that land um, to help with the Olympic Olympic programme, help beat the recession and something which could um, last mm -hmm. and something which could extend beyond the one year lease. And our idea was to set up the Peninsula Adventure Centre, which is basically a high road to course, a sole course, the biggest kind of one in the UK, um, right outside the O2. And the reason that we won it was because we weren't directly competing with the O2 mm. or any of the surrounding businesses. It's the fact that we were working in partnership and we weren't directly competing and we turned it into a day out of the centre. Mm. And we did all the costing and things. Um, there, yeah. right. How many people were you competing against at the, at the national event? There were 21 teams. 19 teams. 19 teams. 19 teams from around the UK. And did it what? It was divided into three business streams, um, so it was five. I have a 16 seat. Um, sorry, Cara. And what you have to do is you to, we had the to, to our idea um, for a day. Then we had the business meetings and we go into business meetings with the experts in the streets. And um, so that is absolutely brilliant. So it's very difficult to you know, try and find that experience of holding a professional business meeting with experts in a field when you're a student. It's just impossible to do. Um, so we did that, we did very well in that, um, and then you have to pitch in front of the other people in the stream and the previous business experts. Um, you've just done your pitch, and then if you get through to the finals, you then get given a disaster scenario. And that disaster scenario was uh, the fact that, great, you've been funded, well done, by the way, you've been funded by a um, news report. It's a PR disaster, how are you going to mitigate it? Um, we, you get, you get 15, 15 minutes to think about it yeah. before you get chucked up on a stage and um, have to present in front of all two, three hundred people, three hundred people, three hundred people plus business experts. And now today we get judged on. Um, so there's a poll. I think that's the best idea. Yeah. And you dealt with these as scenario the best. Very cool. How do you deal with it? Uh, we dealt with it on the fact that um, we weren't going to mention them at all. We kind of said that they've, um, they've paid their dues, they, they are already doing certain things within the community, mm -hmm. and we would give them certain sponsorship and not directly attached to the news report, but to their other subsidiaries, okay. and um, subsidiaries which would be linked directly in with sporting events and outdoor events. So things like that, things that were tied with an outdoor adventure centre cool. rather than just news report. It was quite interesting when the experts came around and said, um, who are you going to get to open your big grand opening? Will it be uh, Rebecca Brooks or will it be uh, Chase or Murdoch? And uh, Alex turned up and it stood up, probably all like, what's going to say anyway? And then we were like, oh, right, so we'd have someone from the local community come and you know, hold the local community and get somebody in. It's like, we're pretty quick. And you have to think quick, you can't just, you can't prepare it, you know what the questions are, so you have to do it quick. Because the team are your students, they're used to muting and doing that debating, and so they're they able to think about it. It's just one person stands up, and we, six of us all probably got very different ideas, and 
one person put the foot stands forward to go, to go up. I hope he's not going to keep this up. <laughs> and, but it's definitely high pressure, but a lot of fun. So you're, you're all law students? Yeah, we were. And you're all going into, into law? Also. No. Um, Alex um, has started a job last week with Westbrook House Cooper in London, in okay. the city. Yeah. Um, Kaylee is going into business administration, and the other four of us are going into, going into business corporate law specifically. Wow. No, no interest in trying to start an adventure. Rose Ross in Central Well, we, we actually <laughs> price it up and it will cost us £680,000 to start it up for a year. When is it break even? Depends on people we get in, but we need 50 people per day to break even on running costs. Right. And, yeah, and no, 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 I think before we get the whole business, <laughs> 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 I'm going to say thank you for coming. I hope that's been interesting. We're all around, we've got more questions. The one thing we are developing that I forgot to mention, we're working with James on a social enterprise version of Flux, which we hope to be uh, doing, doing over the coming year. And the other thing that we did here, which um, you might be interested to talk to James about, is we hosted the National Fund of Flux. And I have to say, it was a lot of work, but very worthwhile in terms of getting the profile within the university. So if any of you are thinking, we need a really big event, and I've got a few hours spare to help James put it together, talk to James about that. It's a really good Otherwise, Can you take our presenters, please? Uh, after lunch,